Hi, I'm Conor Houghton. This is uh, lecture 10 in uh, the probability combinatoric section of our unit mathematics for computer science A. Uh, this will be a very short lecture introducing random variables. Uh, random variables, uh, the idea of a random variable at first seems trivial. It's a map, just a map, from outcomes to real numbers. So the outcomes are the elements of the sample space, the possible outcomes of the experiment that you're trying to model uh, with your probability theory uh, or, or whatever. Uh, and the random variable just maps each of those outcomes uh, to a real number. Uh, at first, uh, as I said, it's hard to know why this is a useful thing, but it turns out uh, to be very useful, in fact, crucial. In, in many, many uh, applications of probability theory, we think in terms of the random variables or uh, things very like random variables instead of the uh, events that we've used to set up uh, the theory so far. It also um, allows us to define things like means of variances, as, as we'll see. So a random variable is a map from outcomes to real numbers. Let's look at an example. Say you were trying to model a, a dice game where you roll two die, uh, and you were then going to look at the value of those dice. And you want to model this game to work out the probability of different events. Perhaps you're going to uh, be betting or, or, or whatever. It's just, a, just an example. So first thing you want to do is you want to set up your sample space, all the possible outcomes. Um, there's different ways you can set up the sample space. The easiest way is just to look at all possible uh, ordered pairs. So the value of the first uh, dice, the value of the second dice. You could argue that since you're going to add them in the end, you could uh, just look at the unordered pairs. But that thing makes things a little bit more complicated because the unordered pair 1, 2 has twice the probability of occurring than the ordered pair uh, 1, 1 because 1, 2 corresponds to the ordered pairs 1, 2 or 2, 1. And so if we do it like this, um, the most straightforward approach, uh, each of the outcomes has equal probability, which will make things easier. Uh, although that obviously isn't required. Uh, so the random variable, well, say we're dealing with the, um, the value, the sum value of the two dice, a good random variable would be the random variable that just mapped an outcome to, to, to the sum value of the two dice. And so it maps uh, N and M, the uh, value of the first dice, uh, the first die, I suppose, uh, and the value uh, m, the value of the second die, it just maps that to m plus n. For example, um, 3, 2, first dice being 3, the second dice, dice being 2, that just maps to, to 5, uh, as indeed will 2, 3, etc. And we'll talk more about that in just a second. So this is a, a, a potential random variable on the uh, set of outcomes of rolling uh, two dice. Now, an event, uh, an event can be defined from the random variable by looking at all the outcomes that take the same value. Um, this is really the power, or part of the power, of, of random variables. It, it could be regarded as just a piece of uh, notational sugar, just a nice way of making the notation work. But we should never underestimate the power of a good notation. So, um, S equals 5 uh, is often taken to stand for the set of possible outcomes that make S equals to 5. So it's this set here. It's X, an outcome x, an element of the sample space, such that, remember this upright line reads as such that, s of x, the, uh, the mapping of x using the random variable is equal to 5. And in this case here, that corresponds to four outcomes. So s equals 5, um, when we say that, we're often thinking of this set of outcomes here, the, the outcomes that map to 5 under the random variable, and in this case, uh, that corresponds to four outcomes. And then we can also define a, a probability for random variables. And uh, the notation used is often this or based on this, P S of S. This is a big S here. This is a little S. And this is to be read as the probability of the event S, big S is equal to little s. This notation is often abused. So um, the, the big S is sometimes left out. If you're trying to be clear, you should leave it in, as always with maths notations, when it's unambiguous. People tend to be lazy and leave it out. Although maths is supposed to be rigorous and careful, there are somehow conventions and places where you are, can be a small bit sloppy. You should try not to be, but you, uh, you'll see that I sometimes am, often am. Uh, so that, that probability is supposed to be read as the probability of the event where big S is equal to little s. So the, this probability here, the probability of uh, the probability p s of s is um, so I'm using little p here. This is the notation that's often used. It corresponds to the probability, the original thing to find on the probability space of the event. And as I said, this event is the probability is the event where s is uh, the value of the outcome. All is the event composed of all the outcomes uh, who that that map to uh, little s under the random variable big S. Okay, so that defines um, 
well, that defines this notation here. It's a probability which is just a normal probability for a particular set of outcomes that are easily described because uh, of the random variable. So in, in the case that we're looking at, uh, PS of 5, well, that's the probability of the event that the, uh, the faces add up to 5. So it's the probability of these four things here. There's four of them. Uh, they all have equal probability. And so it's 4 over 36, uh, which is equal to 1 over 9. Uh, and so, as I said, at this point here, um, a random variable is a map, and it comes along with this nice notation, which, in fact, uh, without thinking about it, is often the notation we use when discussing um, random stuff or probabilities or whatever. Uh, you can also write down a table. So here are the possible values of s along the top. In the case of the rolling two die, uh, two dice, it's a number from 2 to 12. And by doing the sort of counting argument that uh, we did on this page here, you can work out all of those probabilities. 1 over 36 for 2, because there's only one way of getting 2 when there's 36 possible outcomes. Um, 1 over 6 for getting 7, because there's 6 ways of getting 7. The one we did before, 5, there was 4. 4 over 36 is 9. Uh, 6, there's 5 different ways of getting 6. 1 plus 5, 2 plus 4, 3 plus 3. Um, uh, 4, 4 plus 2, uh, 5 plus 1, 5, 5 over 36, etc. Uh, the, these tables, in the case of um, random variables, are called probability distributions, and they're another way of kind of writing down what's happening. It gives you all the information you know if all you're interested in is the events that correspond uh, to particular values of the, uh, of the, of the random variable. Uh, so that's a probability distribution. We'll work out a few more in the next lecture. And I just wanted to say sort of at the end that um, for uh, outcome spaces or sample spaces where all the outcomes are equal, we often think of P of S as uh, modeling the limit, the infinite sample limit uh, of uh, getting S equals S. So you imagine you have the uh, sample space, you would draw um, uh, from the sample space some number of times, the number we're calling at the bottom here, the number of samples we take, we count how many of those uh, of those samples uh, have the value s. In other words, they map to little s under the random variable big S. Uh, and if we do that, and we do it an infinite number of times, so this arrow is as the number of samples goes to infinity, uh, we get some probability. And, and often P S of s is used to model that uh, frequency-derived probability. So that's that's it. Those are random variables. Thank you.